Hi, good afternoon or good morning, depending on your time zone and where you're located. I am Nikki Christus. The intent with today's presentation is to really make sure we know where to look things up and what is the intent behind regulations, GCP, these guidance documents. Not necessarily that we have to have everything memorized, but we do need to know where to go back to things. And as noted, there's quite a bit of room for interpretation as every company has their own SOPs. Every site has their own practices in the way that, that uh, the regulations do fit in to their daily clinic practice as well as when they start incorporating clinical research, how that translates over. So today's concept is the GCPs of essential documents, so really the good clinical practices behind them. Again, the intent, the history, and just better understanding why it is we do the things we do because it can seem like we get buried in minutia in terms of completing the various paperwork, checking the various boxes, recompleting paperwork, resubmitting information. And if we can understand why it is we do this, how we got to this point, then we can share that with our sites and share that with all different parties who do enter the clinical research realm. And by having ownership of the understanding, we can adhere to the requirements and the regulations. So that's sort of globally what this presentation is really focused on. And I've been in the industry for about 19 years. I've worked as a coordinator. I've worked as a CRA. I've worked as a project manager. And probably the last five years, I've been doing quite a bit of international auditing for device studies and drug trials, some supplement trials, as noted both U.S. and, inter and uh, also in India, South America, and Europe. And then I've also done still quite a bit of project management, managing CRAs throughout the world, and obviously quite a bit of teaching as well. That's what we're here for today. Well, I talked about myself a little bit, but jumping into our objectives. So as related to GCP and applied central doc documents, what we're going to cover in the next 90 minutes, describe the investigational product development process and the role of documentation, discuss the roles and responsibilities during the study document handling process, and review the importance of study files and essential documents handling, including review of FDA audit findings. We're just going to touch on that very briefly. So I'm going to start with sort of a broad perspective again in terms of how did we get where we are today with our regulations and our requirements. And then in the middle, we're going to move into some of the roles and responsibilities we talk about updates in these guidance documents. I want to touch on just a few because there's many that are out there and several that have come up in the last 12 months. We're just going to touch on a few key ones that really do impact some of our day-to-day -day trial management, including risk-based monitoring and some of the updates that have come up recently in informed consent. And we'll touch on those. Essential documents. I like to define things to make sure that when we start, we're all on the same page. We're all using terminology the same way. So essential documents are those documents which individually and collectively permit evaluation of the conduct of a trial and the quality of the data produced. These documents serve to demonstrate the compliance of the investigator, sponsor, and monitor with the standards of good clinical practice and with all applicable regulatory requirements. So no surprises there. But how did we get here? Well, even before World War II, we were already working within these silos internationally. And within the United States and the FDA, we had to develop some guidances, some regulations, because it all started with people selling elixirs off the back of their cart and claiming that this miracle cure would work for anything. And that miracle cure contained everything from dirt to feces to dandelions growing outside of the house or to urine from various animals. Sometimes it was harmless, and sometimes it certainly c caused more harm than good, or harm and no good. So we really had to come up with ways to prohibit this. 